selamat pagi semuanya. So uh, today we will have a guest lecture from Professor So Young Wong, uh, as we usually call him Professor Brian. So in our uh, in our uh, when we are being his students, like fifteen years, uh, like fifteen years ago, probably. <laughs> so uh, today we will have a like a class course regarding the hydrogen energy because uh, he is involving the research about the hydrogen energy and also the biomass conversion. So, uh, so usually, uh, actually, we uh, this is a mandatory class for a hydrogen energy class, which is my class. But we also uh, invite our class to join uh, Professor So or Professor Brian uh, pr present presentation today for the class. So, so uh, we will have like about. Uh, 60 to 90 minutes of presentation from Professor Saw. And if you have any, uh, I, I, I hope that you will have a question <laughs> for the, especially for the hydrogen energy class, uh, Kapita Selecta Kimia Fisik 1. Uh, saya harap kalian bisa mempersiapkan pertanyaan, beberapa pertanyaan untuk diberikan ke Professor Saw. So without Further ado, uh, I will give uh, the time to Professor Saw to start uh, the class. So, Professor Saw, the time is yours. Yeah, thank you, thank you for the introduction, Professor Ridwan. And also, it's it's uh, it will be it is greatly appreciated to invite me to to talk about yam hydrogen production today. And also, I'm very happy and lucky to to see the. Uh, Professor Lika and also Dr. Indriati. So I'm now going to share the, uh, my slide materials. Yeah. Okay. Can you can you see the slide, Professor Lika? Yes. Lidua? Yes. Okay. So I'm now I'm now going to start the my lecture. So today's topic is the hydrogen production. Probably you know that the, and the next two weeks the topic is the hydrogen storage. So I'm I'm Professor Yang So at Hanyang University. I'm working at the um, Department of Chemical Engineering, and probably I just again yeah, just introduce myself to everybody in this the Zoom room. And yeah, I got the PhD degree at 2003 at Seoul National University in South Korea. And then I moved to the Northwestern University for my, my postdoctoral post position. And then I came back to South Korea uh, to work at the, um, the Korea Institute of Science and Technology, that is the KIST. And then 2011, I moved to the, 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 this affiliation, the Hanyang University. Okay, today's talk is composed of the four topics and first one, I will introduce the um, just overview of hydrogen economy, <clears throat> and then conventional hydrogen production, and next sustainable hydrogen production will be introduced, and then I will wrap up the um, all the contents of the hydrogen production. Okay, this is the um, just an introductory slide. Yeah, you know that the uh, 18th century. Our energy source is the coal, and that coal will be combusted into the uh, to to make the um, the steam. That steam will operate the um, kind of the engine. That is the um, just a tool for to get the heat and work at the 18th century. But the, after then 19th century, we just collected crude. We just the uh, found the um, crude oil at in the United States of America, and those crude oil will would be used for the internal, internal combustion engine. And then probably at the late of the 20th century, uh, we got the abundance of the natural gas from the oil well, and then that natural gas is combusted for the uh, gas turbine. 
So those are the our historical energy resources for heat and work. Yeah, and then this is the also historical roadmap from the 18th to the 20 hundred years. So probably steam engine over here and the coal side over here and oil is a uh, oil was found at at the middle of the uh, 19th century at in the US. And those is the primary source after then. And you know that, yeah, so you can see after USA oil picked, we got the number of the um, nuclear plants and all the, also the solar cells and every renewable energy resources to be discovered. And, but yeah, you know that the, this is the, um, our ideal energy resource. So sunlight will be used to get the energy using the photovoltaics and the hydropower. And then that energy will be used to get the, um, just, uh, to dissociate the hydrogen to, to gather the, um, the hydrogen. And then that hydrogen will be transported to for the um, combustion using at the at the kind of the um, just, uh, energy and work site. And then that water will be recycled back to the um, our, our electrolysis cell to, to produce again the hydrogen. Yeah. So this is the idea. This is very, very ultimate. We are now at not now at this stage to just efficiently and also effectively hydrogen at the society. So we are now move, moving forward to the hydrogen economy. So hydrogen is a is kind of the Swiss army knife. You can see over here is fuels and the chemicals and also power and heat over here and the transport over here and aviation, aviation and shipping over there. So many applications for the um, just a hydrogen is, are existing right now. But the, um, the problem is that the, um, the, the price of hydrogen is not cheap, but very expensive at, at, in the world. And then here this is the hydrogen demand in the um, fiscal year of the 2018. You probably you can see the, um, so the hydrogen demand is uh, just continuously increasing. So over the um, just uh, this year. So right now we are using the two types of the hydrogen. One is the pure, and the other is the mixed hydrogen. So pure hydrogen is used for the just refining in the oil refining and also ammonia synthesis and other pure other applications. And also the mixed hydrogen, sometimes we call the um, byproduct hydrogen. That byproduct hydrogen is being used for the uh, methanol synthesis and also direct reduced iron in the steel making industry. And about 29, million ton hydrogen per year that is used for the other other uh, applications. And then this is the Sankey diagram. You know about the uh, Sankey diagram, a visualization used to depict a flow from one set of values to another. So probably here, over here, the so natural gas part over here, coal, oil, and byproduct hydrogen. Okay, those are the uh, our pure hydrogen side, and this is the byproduct hydrogen side. Those will be used in the uh, many applications. So here, defining ammonia transport over here. And in case of the byproduct hydrogen, you can see the methanol over here, so the DLI over here, and other heat and work over there. So this information was already just written in this um kind of the um uh, brochure just the future of the hydrogen by written by the um, international energy association and then this is the um just a right now situation just present situation in the um hydrogen economy what about the future so look at the this one 2050 this is the um kind of the deadline of the um, carbon neutrality in just recognized by the um, many 
international agencies. So the 2030 and 40 and 50, the so, so existing field staff uses are just the very stable. It's not changed significantly. However, new field staff building heat and power, industrial energy and transportation and power generation. So those parts it are the new application sectors for the hydrogen. So probably look at the, just comparing the um, number, the values of the 2015 and 2050, just eight to 78. So about the 10 times larger compared to the answers 2015. So we need to make the um, so abundant hydrogen to be produced for the, uh, those kind of the new applications. Yeah, this is very simple and also very important to consider the um, hydrogen as a fuel right now. Just look at the, um, the, our conventional fuels, the diesel and, all, and also the gasoline oil here, and JP8, that is the uh, aviation fuel. So those has the um, gravimetric density about 40 to 45 something. That's, megajoule per kilogram. However, hydrogen has a, about 120 megajoule per kilogram per, per just in terms of the gravimetric density. However, look at the um, just, uh, y axis, the volumetric density over here. So those conventional fossil fuels has a very higher volumetric density compared to the um, hydrogen. Even if the, uh, we use the uh, liquefied hydrogen, this hydrogen is not is, is very lower than the uh, our conventional fuels. So production is also important, but the, uh, more importantly, hydrogen transport storage and transport is important. So, but the, um, those are the, uh, all, all the segments for the uh, our ultimate hydrogen ec economy in the in the future okay and then this is the um, so, so refueling station hydrogen hrs is called, named the hydrogen refueling station over here so look at the left hand side so renewable energy using the this energy the water will be electrolyzed to make the hydrogen and also biogas or the natural gas that that is the composed of the mainly the, the CH4, methane, that methane will be reformed to produce the hydrogen. And then biomass will be gasified for the hydrogen production. So many sectors will be used to produce the hydrogen, and then that hydrogen will be transported and stored to, to reach the um, HRS over here. So sometimes we will use the trailer or the on-site electrolysis at the demanding hydrogen demanding sites. And also we can use the pipeline for the answers um, uh, LNG, just so, so liquefied the so natural gas. And also here at H2, so the so liquefied hydrogen will be used for the um, hydrogen transport right now. It's, uh, it's now it's, uh, under investigation at many, many nations. So, Germany is the um, just a most priority nation to use the um, liquefied hydrogen. And also South Korea is also just working on the um, so just to dealing with the um, liquefied hydrogen. Okay, so, so refueling options over here, just so compressed gas hydrogen, 350 bar and 700 bar over here. And also using the cry pump, so same the pressures of the compressed gas hydrogen and also the um, liquefied hydrogen will be used for the refueling options. And then probably you may often heard about the color of hydrogen. You can see the answer black and gray and brown and blue and green over there. So most popular color right now is blue and green. So 
just uh, look at the, this gray, gray hydrogen. That gray hydrogen comes from the, the natural gas. So at the bottom of the slide, you can see natural gas will be fed into the um, so kind of the, the refinery reforming plant, and then the hydrogen will be produced. At the same time, you can see the CO2 will be made. So that CO2 will be released into the, the, the our the atmosphere or will be captured like this way using the underground or at the sea, we can this CO2 will be captured. If the, the CO2 is captured, we can call the, this kind of hydrogen is blue. And then the last one is the green hydrogen. So green hydrogen comes from the just water using the renewable energy, not the fossil fuel energy. Only renewable energy is effective to produce the um, green hydrogen. So here, green electricity and water. And then those will be will make the um, hydrogen and as the oxygen as well. So right now we are using the um, gray hydrogen. At I think at any 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 nations right now, and yeah, probably just um, Middle East Asia and also the uh, USA is using the uh, carbon CO2 capture to to make the the blue hydrogen. Uh, still at the South Korea, we are now um, obtaining a little this blue hydrogen at the end of a separate site. And you know that the green hydrogen is promising. However, the problem is that yeah, the price of the hydrogen. So green electricity is expensive. So this hydrogen is a probably three-fold or four-fold the expensive than the gray hydrogen. So we need to make an very cheap technology to, to make the green hydrogen at present. And also I have to mention one thing more, the here biomass, nuclear and grid electricity, these, these energy sources can be used for the hydrogen production, but right now no colors are imposed for those uh, hydrogen. <clears throat> and then right now, I'm now moving to the second part. So the conventional hydrogen production. Okay. So firstly, I have to mention state that the um, state the um, as a feed star for the hydrogen production. So here, gas. Gas is the conventional resource for the uh, hydrogen production. So natural gas or biogas are, are hydrogen sources with the stream reforming or the partial oxidation. And then move to the um, right hand side. So here. Oil is also used to, to produce the hydrogen, but yeah, probably it's just a refinery industry is using the, this oil, but the other industry cannot use this oil um, cheaply. So only just a refinery industry are making the just a hydrogen from the oil. And also coal, you know that the coal will make the abundant CO2. So there will be limited situation and now, and probably, you know, that yeah, China <clears throat> uh, is using the coal for the gasification to produce the hydrogen. And go to the um, so algae and wood, and also here, alcohols over here. So this alcohols is, uh, is produced by the um, so, uh, fermentation. Mm, so ethanol, all the uh, methanol can be derived from the gas or the biomass. Those alcohols can be used for the um, hydrogen production as well. And then move to the left hand side here, wood and algae. So those are natural source resources. So probably in Indonesia, many kind of um, so biomass resources and also this kind of algae can be obtained. So those are the very efficient, effective resources to produce the hydrogen. And also, finally, you can see the power, just so water, electrolyzed, 
uh, to produce the hydrogen using the uh, probably our just uh, conventional just power or solar power. So those are the um, our uh, conventional and also potential uh, resources for hydrogen reduction production. And then move to this slide. Okay, at the centerpiece of this slide is the hydrogen. Go to the right hand side. So methanol synthesis. This is the usual application for the just hydrogen hydrogen at present, and also mobility and power generation. Probably you can think about the pure cell vehicle. So that is the um for the, our mobility program. So right now it's not the I think the mature technology. But yeah, we are now pushing the this hydrogen for the just fuel cell vehicles to be pushed in the future. And then so so oil refinery use the um, abundant hydrogen for the um, refining uh, processes and also petrochemical processing. And then move to the, um, this side, carbobosis synthesis. So ammonia is the primary product right now, just coming from the hydrogen. Okay. So and also using the this concept, so hydrogen is a uh, is considered right now as a very potential hydrogen carrier in in the world right now. And also move to here. So the synthetic hydrocarbon, those these are the product name and using the fissure trough synthesis and methanol synthesis and also methanation, those reactions will be used for the, uh, the to, to convert hydrogen to synthetic hydrocarbons. So this side, the right-hand side, is the end of the application of hydrogen. So how to obtain the um, hydrogen. So go to the um, left hand side, you can see the um, four segments, the steam methane reforming, autosomal reforming, and the partial oxidation. Those reactions are effective for the natural and gas oil, uh, such as the, um, just the uh, hydrocarbons. And next one is the um, coal gasification. So coal, that is a solid material, the solid material will react with the, uh, the steam to get the, um, the zinc gas. The zinc gas is a mixture of the carbon monoxide and hydrogen. So using the gasification technology, coal be changed to the, um, the CO and hydrogen. That amount of the hydrogen will be will go to the uh, this hydrogen pure hydrogen part and. Biomass is also is another just a solid resource to get the hydrogen using the same technology such as gasification. And then finally, this is the uh, our ultimate conversion technology to produce hydrogen from the water using the, the electricity. So all the, the conversion process is depending on the um, what kind of resources used. So if right now we are the present um, conventional hydrogen production technology use the um, uh, natural gas and oil over here. So steam methane reforming, autosomal reforming, partial oxidation, those reactions are conventional techniques for the hydrogen production. So at this part, I will focus on the, um, these reactions. Okay, this is very important thermodynamics. So you can see the um, this is the Gibbs free energy over there with respect to um, the, the temperature in a unit of carbon over there. So firstly, I have to mention that this one, steam reforming. So this is the hydrocarbon, the chemical formula of the hydrocarbon that react with the water. Yeah, probably that is the vapor of water. So that is the steam. So those two reactants will react each other and to make the um, CO and hydrogen. So this is the this is called the um, synthesis gas or zinc gas. 
However, you can see this reaction, depending on the carbon number here, just about 900 Kelvin. This is the CH4 curve. So around 900 Kelvin gives free energy is minus. That means so below the 900 Kelvin, in case of the methane, this stream forming of the methane is not the uh, thermodynamically feasible. So above 900 Kelvin, so steam methane reforming is economically feasible or the thermodynamically feasible. And also I will mention later, but the, uh, I have to mention at this slide, water gas shift reaction. So right now, the, by the steam reforming, we will obtain the, the CO, but the CO should be so separated from the hydrogen for the uh, further applications. So how to remove the CO from the, um, the steam reforming outlet? So this is the reaction, water gas shift reaction. The CO will react with the water and this CO will be changed into the CO2. At the same time, water H2O will be just um, uh, reduced to the hydrogen over here. And look at the diagram here. So from the 300 Kelvin to 1000 Kelvin, just uh, water gas shift reaction has the um, just the uh, minus values in terms of the Gibbs free energy. So that means the water gas shift reaction, water gas shift reaction is thermodynamically feasibly visibly at this temperature window. So, and also I have to mention the, um, this reaction, the methanation, the CO will react with the hydrogen to, to produce the um, just, uh, methane and water at the same time. And then this curve, the pink curve over here, just around uh, 900 Kelvin, this reaction is the thermodynamic feasible, but the above temperature, it is not. So, if we do not want to just uh, um, undergo the um, methanation, so we have to use the uh, this temperature, so above the nine hundred Kelvin. And then probably at the just, uh, at the end of the this lecture, I will mention about mention the um, aqueous phase reforming. So C N H E Y two Y O N. These are again just uh, oxygenate product that, that some can be sometimes used for the hydrogen production using the um, just uh, just uh, the reaction like the stream forming. In this case of the compounds, you can see the answer uh, here from here to here. So the Gibbs Gibbs free energy is a minus has the minus value. So that means. This is very thermodynamically favorable compared to the uh, just hydrocarbon without the without the oxygen. So for stream reforming, we have to use the very high temperature. So that means the very energy intensive. And also, so this reaction is the um, is, uh, is the endothermic. That means the we need to use the very high temperature to get the higher conversion. Okay, and then move to just uh, this is the um uh, this slide showing the um just a definition of catalyst because the um all the reaction at the previous slide just, just requires very active catalyst material. So catalyst is a substance increasing the rate of a reaction without modifying the overall standard gives energy change in the reaction. The process is called the catalysis. Probably Dr. Ridwan and also the Professor Lika are familiar with the answer uh, catalysis. So here is the energy of the reactant over here. Here is the answer uh, that of the product over here. But using the homogeneous catalyst, this is the um, energy, cu energy uh, curve between the reactant and product. So we call the, the amount of the, this arrow, uh, this is the um, activation energy of homogeneous reaction. However, 
If we use the uh, solid catalyst, we will have the very different the energy diagram over here because the um, the solid catalyst using use the um the, the three steps such as the adsorption and surface reaction and desorption. So this is the activation energy for the um, um adsorption and this is for the surface reaction and this is for the desorption. So you can just compare the uh, the uh, the heights of the two arrows, this arrow and this arrow. This is the uh, for the homogeneous reaction. This is for the uh, heterogeneous reaction. So the most important concept of the catalysis is that the uh, the activation energy for the homogeneous reaction is reduced to this amount. So that is the benefit of the heterogeneous catalysis. Uh, and I have to mention the, this diagram, this cartoon. So this is the gold and the um, R2 and the CO and water. Those are the mixture of the, the gas phase reactant. And then so water will go to over here, there. And then CO will be oxidized into CO2. So look at the all the reaction occurs at the surface of the gold park. So that is the, um, the important concept of the catalysis for to understand the, um, what happens for the hydrogen production. And then here, so the so usual popular so so resource for the steam methane reforming is the LNG, liquefied uh, natural gas over here. So for the steam reforming, we need the water over here. So water, will be treated to get the uh, high purity water and look at the number of the uh, value of the reaction temperature. At 750 degrees C, methane will be reformed into the CO and hydrogen. This is the reaction. So methane, one mole of methane will react with the uh, one mole of the hydrogen to make the um, CO and hydrogen. This is called the sink gas. That sink gas is gas the shifted to remove the um, CO to produce the um, CO2. And then finally, the so PSA, pressure swing adsorption, will be used for the uh, just to, to, to achieve the uh, high purity hydrogen. And then just uh, CO2 will be, will be captured in the underground or the, at the sea. So this Hydrogen is called the blue hydrogen. Usually, many people know about the steam methane reforming. However, in the industrial size, they use autosomal reforming and the partial oxidation at the, at the plant. So look at the partial oxidation first. The methane and just half of oxygen will react each other. If the, we supply the um, abundant hydrogen, that CH4 will be changed into the CO2. So CO2 and water. So that is not the way for the, the oxidation. So the, the, the name of the reaction is that, but full oxidation, complete oxidation, or the combustion, but the partial oxidation over here. And also autosomal reforming over there. So methane, oxygen, CO2, or water, those CO2 and water will be, will be a mixture of the um, just steam methane reforming condition. So those reactions will occur at the same time and at the, with the steam methane reforming. So you can see the um, just, uh, pros and cons, the benefits and the challenges of the SMR, the steam methane reforming, ATR, autosomal reforming, and partial oxidation parks. So SMR is very high efficiency right? and cost for the large units. But the challenging is very complex system and also sensitive to natural gas quality. However, ATR on parks is the using the um, very small size of plants over here. And also cost for the small unit is, is valid. And here 
hydrogen purification, emissions flaring, those parts are also challenging in the um, ATR and PAX reactions. However, industry using the, uh, these three reactions at the same time to produce the hydrogen. And then this is uh, just a simple process, this, this process flow diagram here. So it's a hydrocarbon, HC, it's a hydrocarbon feed. That is the purified and then reformed. And then that CO, the really made, that is made up by the answer reforming. Those CO will be shifted into the CO2 at high temperature, HT, and then at low temperature, LT. So we call the, these two process, the HTS and LTS using the, the steam right here. And then the CO2 over here, and then hydrogen for the ammonia synthesis. So some of the um, uh, CO will be methanated um, to, to completely re remove the CO in the, in the stream. So very purified hydrogen will go to the ammonia synthesis plant. And for each unit, so Como gamma alumina, Nemo gamma alumina, and the zinc oxide, those character materials are used, have been used for the um, just hydrocarbon processing and also the um, removal of the sulfur containing compounds over here. For the reformer, just SMR, just the popular character material are uh, based on the nickel metals. Okay. And so these hydrocarbons will be changed into CO and hydrogen over here, but at the same time, the CO2 will be made. So using the, the HTS and LTS uh, process, this CO will be changed into CO2, and also the water will be separated from the process stream. And then finally, methane and water. Because the uh, methane is inert gas molecule in the ammonia synthesis. However, CO is a very, very uh, poisoning molecule in the ammonia synthesis. So that's why we have to completely remove the CO from the, from the hydrogen streams. Okay, see the, this slide here. Uh, I have to mention this table first. So pure, pure processing, this is group one, and steel industry, group two, and the final process is group three. So I mentioned this one, the steam reforming and water gas shift reaction over here, in case of natural gas, in case of biogas, and also autosomal reforming, partial oxidation, and methane decomposition, and also gasification, water gas reaction, and AGL, yeah, those the processing so are used for the uh, industrial hydrogen production. But important thing, based on the this process, and also depending on the um, just, uh, our resources for the hydrogen pure processing, you can see the CO in case of the steel reforming plus WGS case. You can see the, uh, the volume percentage of CO ranges between the 0.1 and 4 volume percent. And also here, so look at the, the values of the, so the hydrogen volume percent is larger than the uh, just, uh, three quarters. So 70 to 75, those are usual values of the hydrogen in the product stream. So it's very difficult to remove, completely remove the CO in the hydrogen stream. So many uh, researches and also many processes are intended to completely remove the CO here to, to get the high purity, the hydrogen. Also look at the group two, the steel industry, co-carbon gas, if that is the answer resource from the steel industry that is the use for the steam reforming. And then you can see a larger amount of the, the CO is produced by the reaction. Because why? 
because look at the, these uh, eight reactions. Those reactions occur in pure processing reactions. So probably look at the number five here, methane and water CO3H2, that is the, the steam methane lipomic. But the, um, not only this reaction, but also the other reactions takes place at the same time. The importantly here, C plus H2O and CO plus H2. <clears throat> so this C is the cork formed by the reaction. That cork is made up by these two reactions, the CO and methane. The two moles of CO will be dissociated into the carbon, solid carbon, and the CO2. That reaction is named Goudard reaction. And then methane is decomposed to solid carbon, that's coke material, and hydrogen. Right now, and probably some researchers are focusing on the um, methane decomposition to, to produce the hydrogen right now. So those reactions occur in case of the coke oven gas uh, coming from the steel industry. And then move to the last group, that is the refinery process. You can see CO and CO2 is nothing. Only hydrogen and the methane, and also this just a little bit longer hydrocarbons such as the ethane and the propane, because the, uh, you know, the uh, refinery process are uh, using many, many character materials to remove the CO. So NAPSA hydrotreater, NAPSA uh, isomerization, hydrocracking, or desulfurization, those are essence of the refinery process processes. So right now, uh, I think they are every refinery industry are using to make the um, hydrogen for the, um, their own uh, refinery process using the this uh, uh, technology. And then and this is the um, uh, diagram for the um, pure cells. So you know that the um, hydrogen will be used for the, um, our mobility, just contain the pure cell vehicles. So SFC, MCFC, and PFC, and PMFC over here. That pure cell type depends on the operation temperature. So the PMFC used the, the lowest uh, operating temperature over here. But the, um, you know, here, in this case of PMFC, CO, the content of CO should be lower than the 10 ppm. It's very low. So to get the, this high purity hydrogen, you know that um, just after the steam methane reforming, many kind of, uh, this is the steam methane reforming, conversion to a hydrogen and CO2, and then ship to reaction, that is the WGS, water gas ship to reaction, and then finally, CO selective oxidation is mandatory to get the, uh, this lower amount, low and low amount of the, the CO in pro hydrogen stream. So to produce the hydrogen, pu high purity hydrogen, you know, from the, this diagram is very complex and very series of a process for to prepare the, 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 our goal to get the high purity hydrogen. So I mentioned earlier that the, uh, the, uh, this is the uh, water gas ship to reaction. And also here, just the uh, entropy change is the minus value. That means the, um, this is the end actual summit. And also you, you earlier, you see the, um, you, you see the slide before that the, um, this reaction is thermodynamically favorable at the um, every temperature below uh, 1000 Kelvin. So, but the, um, you know, the, after the um, steam methane reforming, the off gas of the, that SMR reactor, our effluent has the very high temperature. But the, uh, still many amounts of the CO remains at that stream. So using the high temperature, so we will change the, that CO 
into the CO2 using the water gas shift reaction over iron chrome based industrial type the character material. And then that is the after the, this HTS reactor, we will once again just perform the low temperature the ship to reaction using the copper base. So copper is not useful for the high temperature, but the um, iron, chrome, those is very stable at the high temperature. So we will use the different heritage materials for the HTS and LTS. Sometimes for the LTS reactor, the platinum-based heritage materials uh, have been used. And then uh, this is the probably the last slide of the part two, just conventional hydrogen production. So last part is the selective CO removal. So we have the largely three techniques, such as the membrane separation and selective CO methanation and preferential CO oxidation. We call this reaction PROX, P-R-O-X, PROX reaction. So membrane separation, you know, that the end just the yeah, CO and hydrogen, the two components will be separated through the membrane. But uh, we have to use very extensive metal membrane. Uh, user material is the palladium. So palladium alloy membrane is used for the uh, this kind of technique. So in at industry side, they know about the yeah, all about the, the membrane separation, but uh, they do not want to use the, this membrane separation because of the and so methane. So CO is the full source. Is okay, Lidwa? Yes, Professor Sir. Is is now breaking? Is, is it okay? Yes. Yeah, my my screen. Yeah, I got the answers. Uh, so in a, internet connection is poor right now. It's okay. Now it's okay, professor. Yeah, now it's okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the, the CEO is very harmful. The the, the substance for the hydrogen application. So just will be changed to methane using CO usually employs very high temperature, just uh, about the seven, 700 to 800 degrees C. So right now we know about details of the CO methanation, also character materials, but we are not using the CO methane. And Asia for the um, just a, a CO removal reaction. So CO and oxygen will be used will, will, um, will react to each other to produce the CO2. You know that oxygen into the CO2. So this so CO level probably over here about the one the ppm and then from the eight cabin uh, to and four hundred twenty cabin. So so CO saturation is and the temp that caused ppm. Uh, this is the reaction. Uh, I mean the yeah, this is the part of the reaction. So efficiency removal is a part of using the box reaction, but heat and air injection rate has to be low. That means yeah, the efficiency of the WGS reactor is important for the uh, box reaction. And also temperature window is narrow. Look at the, this one. It's about 40 Kelvin. That is the temperature window to get the, um, the low levels of the CO in the stream. And the reverse WGS, that is the reverse water gas shift reaction is possible at low uh, speed velocity. 
So anyway, so look at go back to the probably I think the here probably this one. So just a feed purification and the stream methane stream forming over here and the shift reaction over here and also purification over here. Yeah, those units are connected in series to get the high purity hydrogen conventionally. I think that I'm now just the, um, keep going well, right? Okay, right now keep I'm moving well. to the um, uh, sustainable hydrogen production. I just um, brought up the two examples for the sustainable hydrogen production. First one is the ammonia cracking, and the other is the um, aqueous phase reforming. So I made the, um, about 10 slides before the um, just a summary slide. So firstly, see the um, ammonia cracking over here. Ammonia, we know that the ammonia is right now is very, very famous hydrogen carrier, right? Here, this is the, um, I mentioned earlier, right? So, so reforming, just conventional hydrogen production over here. And this is the um, renewable or sustainable hydrogen production. And that is changed into the, the hydrogen is stored into the toluene to produce MCH, methylcycular hexane. Then MCH is one of the uh, hydro organic hydrogen carrier over here. Also, we have the um, very famous Haber-Bosch process to produce the ammonia. So hydrogen is changed to ammonia by a Haber-Bosch ammonia synthesis process. And then ammonia will be transported at any hydrogen demanding sites. And then that will be sometimes cracked or the used itself. Right now, so some people using the uh, ammonia fuel cell and also ammonia uh, combustion engine, but the, uh, usually petrochemical industry or the refinery industry or hydrogen refueling station that ammonia will be cracked into the hydrogen. So hydrogen is, ammonia is the, is kind of the hydrogen carrier, but the, um, that is also the source for the sustainable hydrogen production using the renewable energy. And then this is the, um, so, so the schematic of the Haber-Bosch process over here, just fossil fuels and air using the the reaction, um, that reaction is already introduced. And then here, N2 and hydrogen. I have to mention one thing more. The N2 comes from the our air. The air separation unit will be used to separate air uh, to hydrogen, and uh, no, oxygen and the nitrogen. So that nitrogen will react with the hydrogen to make ammonia using the Haber-Bosch process. That ammonia is now commonly used as a fertilizer. But right now, it's now changing because this process is not the sustainable. So look at here. Air separation is, a, is, a, is a still existing. So to make the hydrogen, water will be electrolyzed using the renewable electricity. So those hydrogen, we call the this hydrogen E fuel. So that hydrogen will react to nitrogen using the Haber-Bosch process. Right now, the efficiency of Haber-Bosch process process is increasing right now. And then using after the, this process, we can make the um, ammonia. That ammonia will be used for the ammonia, direct ammonia combustion, direct fuel cell, or ammonia cracking coupled with the PEMFC or the fertilizer. So right now it's very, very potential uh, hydrogen source uh, um, for the um, hydrogen production. And also uh, you, I recommend to read this reference 
the HCS energy letters published in 2021. So H2O electrolysis air separation unit over here using ammonia harbor wash process. So here, so this is the amount of energy to produce ammonia. So just look at the number, 33 to 38 gigajoule per ton of ammonia. So this is the, this energy should be used for the this side. And then hold to here. So this is the ammonia cracking first and then separated and purified. And then hydrogen refueling station over here. And the 884, you, you can see over here 2.2, 4.3 gigajoule per ammonia, ton, ton of the ammonia over here. But look at here, ammonia cracking used 4.2 gigajoule per ton of ammonia. So it's because this reaction is <clears throat> endothermic. So that means that we need very high temperature to get the highly efficient ammonia cracking. So if we reduce the amount of energy for the ammonia cracking, definitely at a certain time, ammonia is the, uh, the primary energy source for the uh, hydrogen economy. Okay, so, so simply in the, at the ammonia cracking center, so step one is ammonia decomposition and the hydrogen purification using the pressure swing absorption. And also I have to mention that this uh, entropy change over here, 46, 0.1 kilojoule per mole of ammonia. So this is the endothermic. So what is the meaning? Look at the, this diagram, right? So as the temperature is increasing, the conversion, this is the thermodynamic equilibrium conversion. This equilibrium conversion is increasing. About the 500 we see, you can see the um, probably very complete, the near complete conversion of ammonia to the hydrogen uh, can be obtained, achieved. But if we increase the operating pressure from the ambient to 10 bar, we can see the, um, the curve is shifting to the high temperature side. So because reason is very simple. So two mole of a reactant will be changed into the four mole of the gas molecules. So volume expansion takes place. So we have to be very careful to operate this reaction in terms of the pressure. Okay, and also look at the, this one. This is the kilopascal unit of pressure over here. Look at the, this value, so 2000 kilopascal. So these are just a the, the pressure at the industrial side for the ammonia cracking, but you know that the um, so 99.5%. So still 0.5% of ammonia will remain in the hydrogen stream. That means this hydrogen purification is very important hydrogen cracking, uh, ammonia cracking center. And then this is also a very important slide. Here, right now, probably over, over 70 years, many people have investigated investigate efficient the character materials because we, we want to use the low temperature to, to save the energy in this reaction. So, Right now is the lucenium is the, um, the first the, the first element in the active matter. And then nickel and cobalt and then iron and then the bimetallic. So probably look at this diagram over here. This is the NH bond season. So in the reaction of ammonia cracking, so NH bond should be cleaved. And then Hydrogen species will 
combined each other, and also nitrogen element species will be combined each other, then will be detached from the calculated material by the by a desorption. So calculate the NH bond here. Lucenium is the is very pop. It's the lower um, is the first element in this reaction. And then in case of the the catalysis concept, you know the uh, this the background image is the uh, support material, and this is the active matter. And then N two desorption is the uh, the, in terms of the reaction kinetics, the N2 desorption is a rate determining step. And also hydrogen spillover is 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 a should be should work at the at the between between the metal and the support side. And also the electron donation from the support to active matter is necessary to get the, the high higher reaction rate. So Many um, concepts are reported to to get the the active uh, character material for the ammonia cracking. And then this is the ammonia cracking. So top source commercial character materials here, um, because you know I heard the um, probably some weeks ago from the industry people. That the yeah, ruthenium is, we know that the ruthenium is the yeah, most active, but still expensive. It's too expensive, means the yeah, they, they want to not want to use the yeah, ruthenium for the yeah, industrial carrots for the ammonia cracking. So they are pursuing to, to find the yeah, so cheap metal elements. <clears throat> then probably the nickel, but the, yeah, you know that the, yeah, at the temperature, Above about the yeah, here seven hundred and nine hundred degrees degrees C nickel is is quite centered as a at a larger particle. So nickel is not the, the good the metal element for the ammonia cracking at high temperature. So they are looking at the cobalt and iron for the ammonia cracking, and then I found that. This is very behind the story. I'm just here. Yeah, I spend much time to find the yeah, so why nickel, uh, cobalt, and iron are the um, just good the metal elements. And then I found the um, at the and then this is the commercial br uh, brand name of the character material, the DNK2R, DNK5R, DNK10, DNKX. D means stands for the Danish and N is the ammonia. K means stands for the uh, cracking. So Danish the ammonia cracking 2R series, the 5R series, 10 series, X series. Those are the um, just, uh, just, uh, um, commercially available from the top source company. And then I found that the cobalt iron based carries the using the um, alum alumina as a balance. So this is the workhorse in existing plants and high du durability. And then you can see 500, 500 million ton per day hydrogen or 30 million ton per day hydrogen. Those are the um, commercial scale ammonia cracking plants. Those plants are now using not the ruthenium based, but the uh, cobalt iron bimetallic or alloy, metal alloy based character materials. So if you, anybody in this uh, Zoom session uh, is interested in the uh, ammonia cracking, rather than the um, ruthenium, so the, so the, the cheap metal elements such as iron, nickel, or the cobalt iron, combination is will be, I think that is very good candidate for the research right now. Okay. And then one more thing, I found that this uh, reference probably here, hydrometallurgy. 
So this is the um, just, uh, the India uh, from the India side here. This is the composition of the ammonia cracking head pellet. Here, alumina, iron, cobalt over there. So potassium is a promoter. So right now, the ammonia cracking plant plants are using the this kind of the DNK two R. Yeah, it's very similar type the analog character materials at the commercial uh, plants. And then this is the APR, the aqueous phase reforming. So uh, this, this is very old picture <laughs> because you know the answers here, look at the reference over here. This is published in Nature in 2002. <laughs> yeah, it's very old chemistry, but the, it's very comparable to the steam methane reforming. But the feed stock is uh, changed from the methane to the alcohols over here. Look at the here, this side, the OH over here, the methanol, ethanol, all polyols, those alcohol molecules will be used for the uh, just reforming. So why did him just damage the Professor James Dumasi use the aqueous phase, not the steam. Because look at the, this vapor phase diagram over here. Around 270 degrees C, the vapor pressure of water is close to 54 bar. So using the pressure above 50 bar, so we can maintain the water not the vapor phase, but the aqueous phase. So using the using the this high pressure the condition, we can change these molecules into the hydrogen and also here the alkane molecules. Then move to this side here. So I mentioned earlier the thermodynamics. I mentioned all the thermodynamics for the uh, this aqueous phase reforming. So at the low temperatures here, this part the skips free energy has a minus values. However, in case of the hydrocarbon, at high temperature, skips free energy is a minus. So if we want to just uh, save the energy for heating, and also if we want to operate the reforming reaction at low temperature, probably just uh, alcohol rather than the hydrocarbon is more useful for the, the reaction kinetics. And also, so why liquid phase? I mentioned that the answer steam will not be vaporized. That means the heat of vaporization will be neglected in this reaction. So in, in terms of the thermodynamics and kinetics, this aqueous phase reforming is very important to get the high purity hydrogen. This is the old, also very old fashioned yeah. table. Yeah, this is also 2002 here. They used the uh, methanol first, and then ethylene glycol, glycerol, sorbitol, and glucose over there. So look at the methanol case over here. So scarce alkane selectivity and the hydrogen selectivity is, is marked by the circles. So over there. So look at the here, the methanol case here, 498. So about the 225 degrees C and 275 degrees C at those temperature, in case of stream reforming, these temperatures are not effective to get the higher conversion. However, in case of methanol and low temperatures, we can get the um, very high conversion. So that means yeah, we can, and also we can get the very high purity hydrogen. So if we couple the um, just the pressure swing absorption unit to separate this hydrogen and the CO2 from the APR effluent, probably we can save the energy. And then, you know that the methanol right now about the ammonia shipping 
and also methanol shipping. So it's very right now popular, became, becomes popular. So why is the methanol is right now becoming the uh, popular in the answers uh, of shipping? Because the uh, methanol comes from the CO2. Here, this is the plant just the, in, the, in Iceland over here. So that the company name is Carbon Recycling International. That company is using the CO2 <clears throat> and geothermal energy to make the um, methanol. So right now is a methanol is a very carbon neutral resource for the um, our sustainable hydrogen production. And then right now I'm come back to the aqueous phase reforming. In this reaction, it's very the activity is very depending on the what kind of weather, what kind of support materials are used. So in case it's a matter, so if when we use the answer plate, platinum and palladium or nicotine, the alloy you know, matters, we can get the um, just a high purity of hydrogen. However, if we use the um, ruthenium or the lodium, very expensive matter, uh, rather than the um, platinum and palladium, we can get the um, alkane product. So that means the um, CO will be changed into the, um, so some of the CO will be changed into the alkane, also some parts of the CO2 as well. And also here to get the uh, high purity hydrogen, we do not use the um, this kind of the acid material, acid support. We just use the uh, just Lewis acidic alumina support to get the high purity hydrogen. Okay. And also and pH also condition pH. Yeah, okay. and the substrate and the type, those are very important to get the high purity uh, hydrogen over there. And this is the, the last slide of the today's class. Right now it's 11.20, ah, not 11.20, over there 9.20 <laughs> a.m. over there, right? So it's very thankful to everybody to summarize the, today's class. So we are now, is moving forward to the um, hydrogen society, but still we are using the um, gray hydrogen coming from the uh, natural gas we are not just uh, cheaply producing the um, hydrogen by uh, water electrolysis. So that means we, we have the many things to do for the sustainable hydrogen economy. So probably non-fossil fuel resources should be our, our future resource for the hydrogen production. And also, I mentioned many times at today's talk, the calcium material is the most important to get the uh, efficient and also proactive the hydrogen production, rather than just uh, against the um, to the traditional SMR reaction. So I'm just recommending just uh, many people at this the undergraduate student to pursue the, uh, the subject of catalysis in the uh, graduate course. <laughs> Okay, and then finally, the cooperation of scientists and engineers with a different technology background is highly required to develop the Nobel Catalytic Process. So I know that the, um, all the students come from the um, Department of Chemistry. Am I right? Am I correct, this one? <clears throat> yeah. Yes, <clears throat> Professor. So, but yeah, you know that the yeah, scientists uh, are very important. And also chemical engineers are very important. Both sides should cooperate with each other to get the um, just a very efficient character process and to achieve the uh, sustainable hydrogen economy. Okay, thank you for your kind attention. So this is the answer to Korean. Thank you for your kind attention. The 경청해 주셔서 감사합니다. This is the end of my talk today. Thank you very much, 감사합니다, Professor So for the presentation. So uh, we will now go to the question and answer uh, session. So for the uh, for the mandatory class of uh, KSK Physics 1, 
uh, so you uh, you do you have a question for professor brian here regarding hydrogen production so basically in the in our previous in our previous class we also already mentioned about the hydrogen uh, the the background of hydrogen energy and uh, right now uh, professor saw uh, detailing on the how the hydrogen was produced by extreme methane reforming or water gas shift reaction and for another kind of uh, example uh, for the hydrogen processing a uh, hydrogen production process so uh, do you have uh, any question if you have any question please raise your hands in this uh, by clicking the raise hand uh, gesture in the uh, zoom Okay, we have Farah Marcella, so you can go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you, Professor Yao, for the interesting lecture. Uh, as far as I know, the demand for hydrogen is increasing as the world transitions toward uh, renewable energy sources, such as solar and wind energy. Uh, moreover, governments worldwide uh, are implementing policies and incentives to promote the adoption for uh, of hydrogen as part of their climate strategies. Uh, what are the main challenges associated with scaling up hydrogen production uh, to meet uh, the increasing demand? And how are researchers and industry working to overcome these obstacles? And also, uh, my second question, uh, I was interested with the Haber-Bosch process for ammonia synthesis, uh, is it uh, classified as gray, blue, or green hydrogen production? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank, for, you. thank you. Thank you for your, your questions. Um, first question about regarding the first question, <laughs> the answer depends on the uh, what is your nation. Very, very different. Uh, so that means you know, the national situation, national environment will affect the you know, uh, uh, hydrogen production uh, technology. So probably think about the UN nation. I I'm explaining you know, my the South Korea the situation. South Korea, you know, the you know, every energy resources are imported. Probably after thirty years after. I think the you know, South Korea still importing should import the um, every resources for the um, um, just uh, even if the um, hydrogen is the um, just common resource in the future. So we have to consider the um, just the um, right now is Korea. We are now not interested in the hydrogen production because we don't have the, any resources. So we should import. Some from the somewhere, probably from Australia, because you know, Australia is an abundant renewable energy. So that means you know, at Australia, in Australia, water will be electrolyzed into, into hydrogen, and then hydrogen is stored and transported into Korea. <clears throat> so government policy should be different from the um, probably your nation. Okay. Okay, clear. Enough, enough for the first questions. Uh, yeah, uh, let's answer my first questions. Okay, second question is the um Haber-Bosch process, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then you are saying the color of the hydrogen. Uh, pardon? Color of hydrogen from uh, the yeah. ammonia. Correct. Green. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So. That depends on the um, you know the go to here. You know, you know, you probably know that the um green ammonia and blue ammonia, <clears throat> right? <clears throat> yeah, right. <clears throat> so why why green? Why blue? So that means the um, still this ammonia is making by a conventional way. Say the um, just the hydrogen comes from the steam methane reforming technology, not coming from the uh, just water electrolysis. 
So we are now moving, every people in the world is moving to the, uh, just the, um, from the blue or just gray ammonia to the, the green ammonia. So it takes time to, to achieve the uh, green ammonia uh, at a very cheap price. Is it okay for the, your, your questions? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you for the explanation, Professor Yang. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Is there any question from the uh, students here? Or probably I would like to uh, I would like to uh, introduce you, Professor So, for uh, with uh, Miss Amina Umar. Uh, she is a head of the graduate uh, program, uh, professor. Uh -huh. So wait, wait. Yes. Okay. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, maybe for from Miss Amina Umar. Uh, Hello, good morning, Professor Sun. Uh, yeah. yeah, nice to meet you. Can you hear me? Hello, good morning, Professor Sun. Yeah, nice to meet you. Good Hi, morning. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It is a nice presentation. Um, no, I think yeah, I, I should uh, appreciate your invitation. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Uh, do you have any question, Miss Amina, for this topic? <laughs> <laughs> no question yet. <laughs> uh, okay. Maybe yeah, next, and also, next, and also uh, probably the yeah. Professor Lidwan. Yes. Yeah. Probably the next week's seminar is focused on the um, hydrogen storage. Yes. Next right. Month, uh, ne so next and probably I will <clears throat> I will use the this slide you are now okay. looking at, right? Because ah, the okay. hydrogen production and storage are connected to each other, right? Yes, yes. So if the um nobody has a uh, questions or comments today, probably next yes. week is the good day yes. for that action. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but yes, right. Uh, okay, uh, professor. So, so uh, like professor so mentioned that uh, next week we will have uh, another class another seminar from professor so regarding hydrogen storage and it will be still correlated with the hydrogen production process so uh, hopefully uh, you will uh, yeah you will give uh, you can give a question for next week if you don't have any question for today so uh, now it's 9.30, as I remember, you already have a schedule for your class in 9.40. Right, right. right. <laughs> I, I have Thank, you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your busy schedule, for having uh, this presentation for our uh, students. So uh, we have also maybe last, last uh, professor, Professor so, so we have, uh, I would like to introduce you to uh, Mr. Asep Saifumila. Uh, he is a head of the Department of Chemistry. So, oh. Pak Asep, oh, he already left. Oh. Maybe he has something. Okay. So, uh, so there is one question in the chat professor so Ch so uh, in the chat in the uh, in the chat zoom chat oh. uh, there there is from arif wibowo one more question <laughs> probably so do you have any yes. recommendation for indonesian government related to downstreaming industry especially related to hydrogen resources so from arif wibowo uh, he's asking do you have any recommendation for Indonesian, Indonesian, Indonesian government for downstream no, industry? No, I, I do not have. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sorry, <laughs> I do not have. <laughs> okay, 
uh, makes sense because you don't have you don't know uh, <laughs> yeah, the inside of right, Indonesia because you know, I I right now probably we meet each other because you know, I I don't know yeah. right now well about about the you know, Indonesian the the situation Indonesia, for the, you know, the yes. hydrogen economy yeah yes 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 it's true it's true. <laughs> Okay, so uh, thank you very much, Professor So, for uh, for having this uh, seminar for our students in Department of Chemistry, Universitas Indonesia. So probably we we will meet uh, next week, Professor, in the same time, like eight a.m. in Indonesia or ten a.m. in Korean time. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, Professor. So, uh, no, no, see thank you. you. Thank you next again. Week. <laughs> <laughs> thank you back. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. See you. See you okay, next week. Uh, at for... this, uh, using the anti Zoom yeah. link. And then, uh, everybody in this room yes. is uh, is very thankful for the answers. Uh, my just hearing the uh, my presentation today. And today is the uh, probably yeah. you probably knows a little about the hydrogen production. However, hydrogen story is very has very different story from the hydrogen production. Mm -hmm. So I will prepare the um, um recent stories about related with the um, hydrogen storage. Probably that will be very helpful to understand the um, uh, overall hydrogen economy. Thank you for your attendance. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor. So, so for uh, for hydrogen energy class, uh, don't forget to join the next lecture from Professor So uh, uh, next week on 21st of March uh, at the same time at 8 o'clock uh, Indonesian time or uh, 10 o'clock in Korean time. Thank you very much for your attention and attendancy. So let's us meet next week uh good morning everyone thank you very much thank you very much thank professor you. Saw yeah thank you <laughs> thank and you also dr liduan you you can yes. see the answer the chat yep one one yes you uh, i will i will if you don't mind i will give okay. your uh, email address to arif ibo yeah, i hope you can you can do it yeah okay Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Much, see you. Professor. See you next week. See you next week, Professor. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. So.